It is famously said that New York is the city that never sleeps. And the new head coach of the Brooklyn Nets fits that aphorism perfectly. Former Richmond basketball standout and Hall of Famer Kenny Atkinson is the first former Spider to be a head coach in a major U.S. sports league. But the reality is still sinking in. It's amazing. I, I'm waiting for that moment where you're like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an NBA head coach. I don't think it's going to hit till I coach my first game. For a native of Long Island, earning an NBA head coaching job in Brooklyn means even more to someone who appreciates the history of basketball in the city. You know, I always looked up to the players from Brooklyn. I, I said in my career, like, Brooklyn is basketball. It's, it's, it sounds a little corny, but it's like, you know, I, I, I you know, storied, you know, great players, Bernard King, you know, Chris Mullen, you know, Pearl Washington, uh, that I mean, great storied history of, of, of basketball. So, um, and then just being from, being from here and watching Nets games growing up all the time with my family, my dad especially. But before Atkinson played professional basketball overseas or served as an assistant coach in the NBA for eight seasons, he was a Richmond Spider, leading UR to the Sweet 16 in 1988. He appeared in two NCAA tournaments and an NIT. But just like so many times in his life since, Atkinson took a less traveled path to his ultimate destination. Uh, Richmond, I think Richmond was kind of off the radar. You know, we knew a lot about East Coast schools and, and, and you know, schools in our area. And, and really, I would say I got to give Dick Tarrant, you know, a lot, of, a lot of credit. I'll never forget he wrote me a two, I think it was like a two-page letter, handwritten letter, and all the reasons why he thought I could I could uh, help the program and, and without blowing smoke. It was very realistic, it was very um, personal, um, handwritten. I, I, I actually looked for it a couple of years ago going through my stuff and, and it was really like poik. And then when I went down there, between the Robin Center, blew me away. I had no idea, how does this you know, little school have this type of arena? Um, and obviously they were, they were you know, starting to get really good then and with Johnny Newman and, and that group and I was like wow like I was really surprised I had no idea this place existed. My, my first recollection is he was a, a, a fierce competitor whether it was just practice or games he was a competitor by nature and it's such an important thing in an athlete and now as a coach of course so my first impression was he's a tough nut <laughs> I mean a tough little guy we, we got along very well and uh, he, he, was, he was feisty, as you know, and uh, he, he had a great career here, and he certainly paid dues as a professional player and coach. When Kenny got the job with the Nets, building his team of assistant coaches was a big priority, and he looked all the way back to his Richmond days to find the perfect assistant in former Spider teammate Chris Fleming. Yeah, well, you know, we always kind of stayed in touch uh, as he as he played abroad. I I really stayed in the same same area, same town in Germany, but we always kind of uh, stayed connected. Uh, when he started coaching in France, he ended up coaching for a guy that I was pretty close with, and uh, you know, so we 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 always got together every summer and shared ideas, usually at the summer league, um, and uh, you know, it just kind of came together. Uh, for this job. While Atkinson will be a first year head coach in the world's best basketball league, those around him know that he has the qualities to be successful at everything he does. I think he has a very good player coach relationship. Everywhere he's been, the players recognize he's a dedicated teacher. And you, you talk to any of the guys on the Hawks, any of the guys at Houston, the Knicks, look at the Lynn situation and the publicity that got, uh, I, I think he knows they're for them and not for him. You know, what made Kenny a, a, a really outstanding college player was the fact that uh, A, he was competitive and you saw that on the court, uh, but he was a guy that took an enormous amount of time to prepare himself for those moments where, where the lights were on. And, and uh, I think the same, that same uh, strength is, is, is what he uses in coaching because you, you see, of course, you see when he's on the sideline, you're going to see his intensity. There's no doubt about it. You saw it in practice today. Uh, but he really, really, behind the scenes, really works at the game and, and prepares himself. He's been preparing for this for years. 
He was never worried about being a head coach. In my, all my conversations with him, you know, the time's going to come, but I got to be prepared when it does. And he had really worked at it. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I can't can't think of a person that's earned this this position more than he has. And I'm not sure where I get get this philosophy. Just maybe in a was focus on your job, your job that you're given, and, and do do the best you can. And and I was never really focused on the next job or, or working for another team, just really locked into the job I was doing. And um, it's funny, it's kind of it's like the, the, the philosophy I want with our team, like we're, we're not necessarily like, sure we want to win and, and all that, but we're going to just be so focused on our job that hopefully success will come behind that.